Hello friends, I'm here today to share with you um, a last 10 books, but it's the first 10 books that I read in 2022. Um, I'm very far behind on filming, so um, you're going to see this and then um, a vlog on Thursday and then next Monday will be another last 10 books and then I should be caught up. Um, so... Starting off the year, I read, I wrote Bloody Air by Sophie Lark in my journal. I think it was Bloody Heart, but the cover will be here. Um, this is in her Brutal Birthright series. Um, this one is kind of a second chance romance. I forget the character names. I'm terrible with names anyway. Um, but it's a second chance, something, they were together, kind of, I think it was kind of secretly they were together, and then... Um, she found out she was pregnant and the night she was going to tell him there was like this big attack. Um, so in order to save herself and the baby, she runs away and doesn't tell him. Um, so this is them kind of coming back together and him finding out about the baby, but also still dealing with, he is still a part of a mob family. Um, so they're dealing with that. Um, I thought it was good. I ended up giving it three stars. Um, I felt like there was a lot of buildup in their past relationship and then they didn't really get to know each other after the time jump. Um, I felt like it was a bit quick after they met back up and everything. Um, next I read Wicked Highland Ways by Mary Wine. I ended up giving this one three stars, but I honestly do not remember what happened in this book. Um, uh, I kind of read this series, most of the series towards the end of the year, and this was the last one that I just didn't make before New Year's Day. Um, and I think all of the books just kind of blended together for me. Um, none of them really stood out to me or anything, and so I don't honestly remember what happened in this book. Next was the start to a new Devney Perry series, and that is Indigo Ridge, book one in her Edens series. Um, so this one is about, I can look up names now. This one is about Winslow, and she is just become the, like, chief of police in Quincy, Quincy, Montana. Um, so she, like, in one of her, like, first nights there, she meets this guy at a bar and hooks up with him. But she kind of leads him to believe that she's not from the town. Um, and anyway, she ends up, like, going to work the next day and finding out that he is the son of kind of, like, the prominent family, um, in the town. And then, um... Uh, there's a bit of a mystery element to it. Um, they find a dead body on his property and um, they kind of have to work out like who, <coughs> excuse me, they kind of have to work out like who killed the girl that um, they find on his property. Um, I ended up giving this one five stars. I absolutely loved it. Um, it was the type of couple dynamic that I really love to see from Devney Perry. Um, the mystery had me intrigued. Um, probably should have seen the resolution to it coming, um, but I didn't quite pick up on it, but I could see how a lot of people would have. Um, but yes, I adored this to pieces. Um, this was my first five-star read. The next book I read was also a five-star read for me, and that is Defy the Night by Bridget Kimmer. Um, this one is a, the start to a new series. I believe it's just called Defy the Night series. I might be wrong on that. If I am, I'll leave it in, like, uh, down below. Um, but <laughs> names. Terrible with names. Tessa. This one is about Tessa. Um, so this was, there's a, there's, like, a whole thing in here about this was written before COVID, but, um, this kingdom has been kind of overtaken by a sickness, um, and they have a, they have like a medicine for it. They kind of have this like black market for the medicine for this illness. And Tessa is uh, somebody who 
like I want to call her a drug runner but that kind of has a negative connotation um but she uh she she helps create the kind of like black market version of the drug for it for the illness and her and her best friend Wes um take it to the people who need it um, and then one day Wes disappears and she thinks that he is one of the smugglers that got um, captured by the king and the prince and was ultimately killed. And so she sneaks into the castle kind of by accident. Like she doesn't really have a plan after she sneaks into the castle. She just kind of sees an opening and goes for it. Um, so yeah it's it's a thing um but yeah so like then she's captured into it and I kind of need to stop there because if I talk anymore it's gonna be a spoiler but yes this was so good and I actually thought that this was a standalone but it very much ends like there's gonna be more and Goodreads says it's book one so I cannot wait for book two to come out. I don't know when it does. This one came out, I believe in the fall. So hopefully maybe fall of 2022, but I don't know that for sure. This next one I had a physical copy of, but I detested it so much that I have already gotten rid of it. Um, that is The Earl Takes All by Lorraine Heath. I gave this two stars. Um, had I been reading it physically, I would have DNF'd it, but I was listening to the audio, um, so I finished it. <sighs> I <be> <laughs> Some historical romance book group read this a few weeks before I read it, and I was led astray. All of those people were talking about how romantic it was, and it was not romantic. <laughs> Okay, it's not romantic to pretend to be your dead brother, whether or not he gave you permission for it. Um, it's not okay to sleep with his wife. It's not okay to sleep with his wife while she thinks you're her husband, um, but he's dead. Um, it's not okay. <laughs> it's not okay and it's not romantic for after she finds out for them to just be like, well, you can keep pretending to be him because everybody's talking crap. Like, okay, so the husbands were twins, or the husband and the main love interest in this book were twins. Um, they went off on a trip traveling in Africa or something. Um, so the husband dies and the other one, like, takes his place and says that he's the one that died. Um, but, like, the, the man is dead and you're letting everybody talk crap about you but they think it's him. I, like, I, I did not like this book. I didn't think it was romantic. I didn't. I hated him in the first half um, when he was lying to her. And then when she found out and she was just kind of like, whatever about it. Like, I've, I've loved you more since you came back. So maybe I loved you and not my husband. Like, I didn't love it. I didn't. I didn't like it at all. It was, it was bad. It was bad. And then I listened to the next book in that series, um, The Viscount and the Vixen, and I gave that one three stars. <sighs> this was just super long and super boring. Um, it was, so the, the main female character goes to the home of the main male character because she has like gone into this agreement with his father um but like she thinks she's gonna marry the father but through the fine print or whatever he's like no you can marry me because it just says you have to provide him with an heir or a back of heir or whatever a second heir or something um so if you marry me and I impregnate you then that's the second heir and it was just super repetitive. I felt like they had the same arguments over and over again. Um, I didn't really love their dynamic. They didn't really click to me. Um, I also could have just been really pissed off about the second book in the series and yeah. Next was Teach Me by Olivia Dade. I ended up giving this one three stars. Um, it was pretty good. It was super short so it was very insta-lovey. 
um, this is about two teachers and, um, he's like the new teacher at the school and due to like administrative reasons, um, he's kind of taken over, like they have to share a classroom. He's kind of taken over some of her, some of her classes. So they're in the same classroom, um, which that seems weird to me, but whatever. Um, like I said, yeah, it was super insta lovey. It was super quick. Um, I don't, I don't really know. I don't know. I, I rated it three stars. Next was Broken Vow by Sophie Lark. Um, I gave this one four stars. It was my favorite of the Brutal Birthright series, but I still didn't super love it. I liked the main couple. I liked their dynamic. I liked that it um, it still had the connection to uh, the series and all the other stuff going on, but it didn't take place in Chicago. Um, they end up in Tennessee at the male character's family farm, ranch, whatever the word is. Um, I really enjoyed their dynamic, but I felt like the pacing was a little off for me. Um, <coughs> as far as the actual storyline past the romance, um, it just didn't, it didn't seem to flow for me. Next, I started the Cloverleaf Farm series by Melanie Harlow, and I read Irresistible. I ended up giving this one four stars. This was super cute. Um, names. Terrible names. So Mac is the single father to three daughters. Um, his wife has left him. I think it was a couple of years by the time the story starts. Um... But Franny is, Mac works for Cloverleaf Farms and Franny's family like owns it and runs it. Um, but she had an illness when she was younger. So she's kind of been, she's an adult. She's an adult, but she's very much treated like a baby by her family. Um, but she has become the nanny to his girls and it just kind of builds from there. They spend a lot of time together taking care of the girls, stuff like that. I didn't totally feel the connection between them. Um, I felt like maybe they need, I don't know. I think I just wanted a little bit more drama from it. Um, like at one point he like blows her off for a date, but doesn't even call her to tell her like, hey, one of the girls is sick. You know, that, like that's something she might want to know too. She is their name. Like she does care about them, you know? And she was just like, oh, it's fine. I understand the girls come first. Which, like, yes. But, like, you're not even, like, you're not even a little bit upset that he blew you off and didn't even call to tell you. You know, like, I don't know. I just felt like I wanted a little bit more passion from them in that aspect, I guess. But it was pretty good. I am super excited to continue on with the series. There were background characters that I am so ready to get to. <laughs> And finally, the 10th book was Never Enough by Roxy Noir. Roxy Noir is an, art, um, an author that I discovered last year. Um, I ended up giving this one three stars. It's apparently the start to a rock star series. Um, but this was the only one I can find in audio on, like, through my library. So, so like I said, this one is a rock star romance. Um, it was one of those uh, where he needs somebody to date to better his image in the public eye and he chooses her they meet like backstage through a mutual friend but he will only do the fake dating if it's with her um this was like it was pretty good it wasn't as good as other Roxy Noir ones I read um and it, like I said I listened to it on audio so it was a little bit easy to zone out but it wasn't very hard to catch back up with what was happening either so <clears throat> okay so that is the first 10 books that I read to start off the year um like I said there will be a vlog on Thursday and then I'm gonna go ahead and film now the next set of last 10 books so thank you guys so much for watching and I will see y'all next time bye